Okay, so in this uh, quick little video here, we're going to review um, unit 4.1, which is determining the slope of a line. Uh, so it's kind of like the quintessential things before you start writing the equations of lines and writing equations from uh, word problems. It's just understanding what these certain words mean. So a couple things that I have here that uh, we're going to start off with is the idea of uh, the word, what is a difference, uh, what is a ratio, and this idea of to remain constant. So first off, here we go. Uh, difference. So the difference is the result of subtracting one number from another, and that's all it is. You can uh, have any result, and as when you deal with slope, uh, what matters is just the whatever the resulting number is from subtracting. So if you do 5 minus 4, the difference of that is the result is 1. If you were to switch that around and do 4 minus 5, the result of that is negative 1. Okay, so as it pertains to slope, um, we think of difference as simply the result of subtracting one number from another. Ratio. So slope, and as we go forward, is literally a type of ratio, and we'll talk about that on the next page. Um, but a ratio is the amount of one thing compared to another. Now, um, there's many different types of ratios you can have, and we'll talk about again that on the next page, that slope is a specific type of ratio, um, but the ratio is one thing compared to another, and generally written in the forms of using the words two, uh, using a colon, or um, a fraction. And for this particular video, okay, we will be highly uh, using a fraction, okay? We will not be using two or a colon for slope. Again, we will be focusing on using a fraction. Now, constant, what does it mean? Constant. Constance is an important idea that it's something that remains the same. So no matter what you do, you always get the same result. So to be constant means to continually get the same result. All right, so let's go on to the next page and take a look at some of these examples. Okay, so using those definitions from the first slide, we're going to take a look at a rate of change. So I have written down here, a rate of change is going to be a type of ratio in which the integers for comparison are differences from two separate data sets. So on a graph, on a, this is called the slope of a line. So um, that is what we use for definition. Um, a rate of change is a always a rate of change. So what you need to know is slope is a type of a rate of change. So we use the word slope specifically and only when we're talking about a graph, when we're looking at a visual drawing of a line. So slope. Slope is written as a ratio okay, of the vertical change, which is sometimes referred to as the rise of a line, to the horizontal change, which is sometimes called to and referred to as the run of a line. And um, reading that full sentence out, a slope is written as a ratio of the vertical change rise to the horizontal change run between any two points on a line. So remember, one of the things I talked about before is we are going to use a fraction to represent this ratio. So what's very, very important is that slope cannot be mixed up. It must always be rise compared to run or vertical change compared to horizontal change. So next bullet point that we need to know is that this will remain constant. So remaining constant remains to get the same result every time. So this remains constant for any two points on the same line. Next bullet point, here's the third one. Slope is written as a fraction. So remember, you can write ratios in three ways. We are specifically going to use slope as a fraction form always. And we write that fraction in simplest form. So remember, simplest form just means to reduce it as much as you possibly can. So if you get a fraction that has common uh, factors in the numerator and the denominator, you must reduce it. So variable for slope, the last bullet point is m. So the universal uh, variable we use for slope is going to be m. All right, so now let's just take a look at the types of slope. So you have four main types of slope. You have a slope that which is a horizontal line. Okay, and we'll talk about what its slope is shortly. We will have a slope of a, what we call a vertical line. So if you wanna write in these boxes, horizontal, vertical, go ahead. And then we have two other types. So if it's not horizontal and it's not vertical, it means it's going to be slanted. So you're going to have a line that is slanted like this, in which the slant 
looks like it's going up on one side on the right hand side and you have a slanted line that if I look to the right hand side of this point of this line if I look to the right the arrow is pointing down if I look to the right the arrow is pointing up so let's talk about how we describe their slope so a horizontal line by definition will have a slope whose value is zero and then we move to the next one so the slope of a vertical line will have a slope whose value is undefined which means we cannot assign it a value. We cannot actually give it a number. There is no number for which we can do that. And that has everything to do with the, the run. So the run of this line means how much does this line have a difference from right to left? And it's zero. And in a fraction, if you put zero in the denominator, we have been, uh, you have been taught since uh, you were younger that that is an undefined value. It's a value you can't calculate. So the next one we have here is we have if the line is going up, so it's slanted okay, to the right, which means as, as I move my finger along the right of this line, notice at the end, the arrow is pointing up. What's very, very important is that we must be moving to the right, okay? So that slope will be said to be positive. And I just want to remember that any type of line that has this type of thing where if I move my finger to the right, the arrow is pointing up is positive. And then the opposite of that will be, as I move my finger to the right on this line, notice my finger ends up pointing down. So this one, while one is positive, the last one is negative, okay? Which means that M will have a negative in front of its fraction, okay? Positive doesn't need to have anything. Positive is assumed to be positive if there's no negative sign in front of it. Okay, so let's continue on. I got four examples here that we'll go on. So, and uh, we're gonna talk about how I do this from a graph, okay? So we are going to actually have to figure out the ratio of how much does this thing rise versus how much does it run. So on the left-hand side here, I've got M equals, all right, the uh, comparison of slope is going to be, uh, again, the rise compared to the run. So the first one that you think about, the rise, goes in the top. When you write it as a comparison, the first one you say goes in the top. And the bottom one we have the comparison to is the run. So let's talk about on a graph, how do we show the rise and how do we show the run? So the rise is the vertical change, which means we use a vertical line to show it. And the run is a horizontal line, horizontal change, so we use a horizontal line. So essentially what we are going to need to do is we're going to need to connect our two points drawing a vertical line and a horizontal line, remember? that the vertical is called the rise and the horizontal is called the run, okay? So let's go ahead and go through this. So first off, the first thing I do is I locate my two points. So my two points are here and here. The next thing I will do is I will connect them with a vertical line. So I draw a vertical line up to the grid that that other line point is on, and then I draw a horizontal line. The next thing I will begin to notice is that this line has the slant in which when I move my hand along to the right, it's positive, okay? So when I write my ratio, I just need to remember it's positive. So all I now have to do is implore the counting principle of what is the value of this vertical line, what is the value of this horizontal line, and then I will write them as a ratio. So because it's positive, there's no need to write a positive sign in front of it. It's presumed positive if there's nothing in front of it. So we're gonna go through this. So what is the value of my vertical line? And essentially all you have to do is count the grid lines. So what I mean by counting the grid lines is that you're counting how much does it change to so the value of this line is count one box, two boxes, three boxes, four boxes, five boxes, six boxes, seven boxes. So for right now, I don't want to get too much into this, but I do want to know that the scale of my graph does matter. So the value of that I'm counting by, I'm counting by ones because the scale of my graph is presumed to be each block is worth one. All right, so the value that I assign to this will be the value of seven. So each block counts as one, there are seven blocks, so that value is seven. Seven times one is seven. The next thing I will do is I will count the run, and the run is one two, three, four. So there are four blocks that make up the horizontal line, so the run is a value of four. The very last thing I will do is I will take a look at this ratio and I will see 
Can the numerator and the denominator, do they have any certain value that they both can be divided by to reduce it? And in this answer, there is no number that you can divide 7 by that you can divide 4 by. So the slope is just left as the comparison of a rise of 7 compared to a run of 4. So that means as this line to go from point to point, the comparison will be 7 to 4. All right, so on to the next example, number 2. So number 2. I take a look at this one here, and again, I will just go through the same thing I did before. Okay, so I will locate my two points. So I've already got them located on here for you. I will then connect them with a vertical line. So I will start with a vertical line, and I will draw it down until the point where the other one is, and then I will draw across that grid line connecting my horizontal line. And then from here, I will notice, okay, that when I move my finger along here, okay, my eyes, as they go to the right, also go down. Okay, so notice as I go over, I gotta go back down. So if I move along any one of these grids to the right, I have to go down to get my eyes back to this line. So that's important because now I know that my slope is going to be negative. And then I will set up my fraction bar. And then from here, it's a matter of counting how long each line is. So remember, it's the rise over the run, vertical line over horizontal line. So the vertical line has a value of three. So there are three blocks. And now I look at the run, so the horizontal has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I place the 9. Now the very last step, like I said to you, is going to be to look at your fraction and see if it can reduce. Now very commonly, most of you I guess would know hopefully by now that 3 and 9, they do have a common factor, which means you can divide each of these values by 3 to reduce it, and you will get that m is equal to negative 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the final answer to this is m equals negative 1 third. So now, what does that really mean? Okay, why is it that it's negative one third? So remember what I said to you before, okay? I'm just gonna expand upon this one really quickly because there's a little bit more we need to talk about. That there's a couple options that you can do. So for this one, notice what we said is that if I went down three in my original, okay, go down three, and then to the right nine, okay, I would go from one point to the next point. So this simplest form, is actually the quickest path of going down and then to the right, okay, or down or leaving my line and then going off to the right. So the simplest form means the quickest way that if I leave my line would have been to have only gone down one block, okay, so change your rise by one and then change your run by three and notice we end up back at another point. So. Again, what I'm pointing out here is simplest form. Simplest form literally is going to represent the simplest ratio. And uh, as it pertains to ratio, there's a lot that has to do with that we learned when we were younger. But in any case, this one here, what I want to show you, simplest form literally represents one of the quickest ways to get back to the line. And that's what it does. So you can go down three, right nine. You could go down one, right three. All right, you could go down even, down two. So if I started here and went down two, well, how much would I have to go over? Well, down two, to write that as one third, would be, if you look, over six. And if you notice, if I go down two and to the right six, okay, I still get back to my line. So all of these numbers all have a same ratio that reduces to negative one third. So I just wanted to share that with you. I know it was a little much for this example, but this was a good time to talk about that as this is a review. Um, but when I interpret this slope, uh, we always talk about it in simplest form. So the answer to this final one, number two, is the answer is m equals negative one third. All right, number three. Number three is a quick one. It's just a quick memorization. I look at this line, it's horizontal. I immediately say the slope is zero, and that's it. I don't go any farther than that, I'm done. Number four. Again, I look at the line, I notice it, it's vertical. Immediately, I write m equals is undefined, and then I'm done. There's nothing to that one, there's no calculations. So it's a memorization, and you'll get it done quickest. It's just when the line is slanted that you have to remember that you're drawing a triangle of the rise compared to the run. All right, so let's go look at another option, uh, which is going to be uh, when we give you two points.
Okay, so our next type of uh, review here is not from a graph, but it's just given two points. So slope formula. So what is the slope formula? Slope formula is just the definition of the rate of change. And the rate of change, remember I said, is a comparison, a type of ratio in which the comparison is the differences between two data sets. So here's the deal. When we have a point on a graph, all right, a graph is made up of a x-axis and a y-axis. And when we write points, we write them as the x-coordinate comma y-coordinate. That's how we define points on a graph. So the x-coordinate is one data set, the y-value is another data set. So to calculate slope, we need a difference. To calculate a difference, it is the a difference is the subtraction from one number and another. So the result of subtracting two numbers is a difference. So the slope formula, what it's going to state to you, all right, is it's going to state to you that you must take your two points. The slope formula is used to find the slope between two points. And what it's going to say to you is you'll see on any formula sheet, it will say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is going to be equal to the value of what the slope is. So it's simply stating to you, notice we talked about a difference, is the subtraction between two numbers. Now when you subtract, you have to remember, as I stated on the first slide, okay, order is going to matter. The example I gave to you before was five minus four gave you one, but if I switch the order, four minus five is negative one. So as it pertains to slope, a positive value and a negative value is going to matter. The way I prefer just to remember slope is you subtract, okay, subtract the y's, and you subtract the x's, okay? And if you remember it like that, it's okay, um, and that's how I prefer to remember it. The biggest thing you need to remember is that order matters, meaning, okay, whatever coordinate pair you choose your first y from or your first x from, you must then use that order always. So that must be the first value you choose from. So for instance, if we take a look at number one, the best example I can give to you here is going to be m equals. And again, I just subtract the y's and I, then I subtract the x's. So if I take a look at my y values, I choose my y value and I will say this is going to be one and I choose the other y value of three. So I'm going to write one minus three. And then I'm going to write in the bottom of that, okay? Now, here is where the order matters, all right? The order matters very, very importantly. We do not just now get to choose the four and subtract one from it. You must choose the order of which you went from before, which means I must go back to where I got my first value from. So where did you get your first y from? I got my first y from this coordinate pair, so I must get my first x from there. And then I will subtract from it where I got my second x y from and in this case we're choosing an x because we've already used subtracting the y's divided by subtracting the x's so when i go through this problem i will get one minus three which is negative two and then i will take that and write that over one minus four which is negative three now remember as we did before we must write this in simplest form so both of these things can be divided by negative one and when I divide both of them by negative one, my final answer will be m equals positive two over three. So my final answer is two over three. Okay, on to the next problem, so number two. So number two, I will do the same thing. I will subtract my y's divided by subtracting my x's. So when I go ahead and do that, Okay, just remember order matters. I personally, I, I don't really pay attention to this y2, y1 thing. I, I just do the subtracting the y's divided by subtract the x's. I just remember order matters. So I will go pick my first y that I see, it's a four, and I will subtract from it the second y that I see. So I'm going to be subtracting a negative. You must place that negative in this problem, okay? Do not forget the negative. So four minus negative two divided by, then go back to where you first started. So negative two, and I will subtract from it, positive 10. So negative two minus 10, I will do my math. So four minusing a negative is like adding. So in my head, I switch to four plus two, which is six. 
and then I will do negative 2 minus 10. Negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. So my final answer here in simplest form is this can be divided by 6. This can also be divided by 6. So I get 1 over negative 2. So my slope is negative 1 half. You can write it as 1 over negative 2. It doesn't matter, but for that one, it's done. All right, so let's go on to another one. So my last two examples I'm going to go over are number five and number six. And then from there, you should uh, have enough information to which you can uh, do some of the problems out of homework uh, one, uh, except for one extra little uh, expansion. So here we go. Number five. Number five, again, I write slope is m equals the subtraction of the y's. So I will take my first one, nine, and I will subtract my second, so minus nine divided by, so go back to where you got your first value, 5, and I will subtract from it where I got my second value, 3. So when I write this in the problem, I get 9 minus 9, which is 0, and 0 divided by 2. So now, 0 divided by 2, so in a calculator, if you were to type that, you will get 0. So the final answer is m equals 0. Number 6. So number six, m equals, so I will go get my first value, which is eight. So first one is a y, and I will subtract from it my other one, which is a five. So eight minus five divided by, so go back and get your first one. So negative seven, subtract, always put the subtraction sign before you go look at the number. And it's a negative seven, so negative seven. And I will get eight minus five in the numerator once it get, becomes a three. And now in the bottom, negative 7, negative negative is like plus. So negative 7 plus 7 is 0. So here we go. M equals. So here is the tail sign that the answer to this one is undefined. If you have a 0 in the bottom of a fraction since you've been young, you have been told the answer is undefined. Again, if you want the real reason as to why it's undefined, I'm happy to provide that for you in another video. Just ask me and I will give you the answer. Otherwise, you need to remember zero in the bottom of a fraction means it's undefined. Okay, so that's just again calculating it from two points. All right, my last